HIH Insurance Limited is a publicly listed company in Australia. Before falling into liquidation, it was the second largest general insurer in Australia. Ray Williams and Michael Payne established HIH Insurance in 1968. The company covers several insurance segments such as workers' compensation, public and private liability, property, industrial and commercial insurance, and the company also expanded in the US and UK. On March 15, 2001, HIH Insurance was placed into provisional liquidation. They made a total loss of $5.3 billion as the result of over-optimistic valuations of assets and extensive underestimation of liabilities, which represented the biggest collapse in Australian history. The events leading to the corporate collapse started in 1993, where the CG Health commences operated in UK and entered workers' compensation underwriting market in California, USA. In January 1998, HIH won a $300 million takeover bid for FAA insurance. A takeover bid is a type of corporate action in which an acquiring company makes an offer to the target company's shareholders to buy the target's company's shares in order to gain control of the business. HIH admitted that they paid more than it expected for FAI because it was an estimated to be only worth $100 million. Therefore, in March, HIH posts a 39% fall in 1998 net profit of $37.6 million, blaming damage claims. In July, Arthur Anderson, an external auditor, failed to raise an alarm on his responsibilities as an auditor to form an opinion on the truth and fairness of the financial reports. The regulators and others accept the company's declaration for $939 million in assets. Two months later, HIH sells part of its domestic personal lines business to Allianz for over $500 million. A day after the deal, HIH shares tumbled to an all-time low after lower than expected profit results announcement and the criticism of the Allianz deal. In February 2000, HIH defenders' financial statement was overdue at the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority also known as APRA. The Australian Securities and Investment Commission, also known as ASIC, was concerned that the company might no longer be solvent. HIH has a $7.8 billion in assets, which was considered to be one of Australia's largest insurance companies. However, in 2001, McGrath and Little, after offsetting its assets with debt, they were only left with a total net asset of its $133 million. McGrath and Riddle states that an extremely small movement such as 1.7% in the value of assets could move the balance sheet into net assets, assets efficiently. In 2001, the board appointed a provisional liquidator to take control of HIH and 17 of its controlled entities. McGrath estimated HIH had lost over $800 million over the six months to the 31st of December 2000. This is due to HIH company failures to rapid expansion, unsupervised delegation of authority, extensive and complex reinsurance arrangements, underpricing, reserve problems, false reports, reckless management, incompetence, fraud, greed, and self dealing. Therefore, HIH was forced by access into provisional liquidation due to the loss of $800 million. This made it the biggest investigation by the asset seized in all of HIH documents. Rodney Adler, the former HRH director, was sentenced on 14 April 2005 to four and a half years jail. The jail sentence came after pleading guilty on 16 February 2005 to four criminal charges. Now the spotlight's turning on the auditors. In this case, he is Arthur Anderson. In its, audit, in its auditor for the financial year ending June, it found the company was operating with a 939 million surplus. But four months later, a different picture emerged. Losses of up to $800 million forced HRH into administration. What changed in such a short space of time? Or is it possible that auditors got it wrong? An audit has given an all-clear report 
on a company which has then collapsed very soon afterwards with absolute massive debts. The auditors have no responsibility for the management of the company. However, they have responsibility for ensuring that the financial statements represent a true and fair view, and they do have responsibility to dig around to make sure that the figures and the profit and loss statements are accurate. It also includes figures in balance sheets, assets, and liabilities. But it is not their responsibility to search into details of the management of the insurance company and how it's being managed. The HRH crisis is one of the beneficial cases in terms of corporation failure that can be examined in order to derive an important lesson about risk management issue. An ineffective risk identification by the company is in particular essential in the insurance industry, led to subsequently large scale of negative outcomes. It also neglected to, to take into account the associated effect effects on the ongoing assumption by exercising aggressive accounting practices. ASIC investigation has shown numerous aspects of the company's activities that it, it believes may be in breach of corporation law. Then those numbers include insolvent trading, insider trading, direct sharing trading activities, accuracy of financial statements, the accuracy of disclosure made to stock market. HRH collapse and its aftershocks have prompted a reshaping of the Australian general insurance prudential and regulatory framework. It accelerated reform and change releases, caused an expansion of focus on various aspects of the legal framework, which were considered to be in need of attention. The addressed issue impacted levels of co corporate governance, financial reporting, taxation and other policies regarding insurance products. Risk management should be considered as a priority of the corporate policies. Culture problems, misgovernance, mismanagement, such as HIH corporate governance guidelines being not adhered frequently, the bad decision making into expansions, and adequate judgment of the business a contributed to failure in terms of the risk identification and management. The fact that risks are never ending is a critical issue for corporations. The company therefore should add its value through having risk management as a priority.